What's going on, everyone? So there's been a lot of talk kind of circulating that the San Antonio Spurs are shopping and potentially looking to trade Keldon Johnson. Now, obviously, shopping and trading are two very different things. Right? Do your due diligence, kind of listen to like what is being uh, offered, like what could you potentially get. Uh, there was a report that came out uh, that the Spurs may be willing to give up Keldon Johnson along with multiple firsts to go and land Laurie Markkinen. Uh, Lori Markkinen alongside Victor Wimanyama could make a lot of sense, especially with Chris Paul, Harrison Barnes, Devin Vassell. But even without the Lori Markkinen trade, right? Obviously, if you could pull something like that off, that'd be great. Give you a real upgrade. Give you a guy that could slot in at the four, right? With Harrison at the three and then Victor at the five. That would be great. But even if they don't do anything, right? Like, Keldon Johnson's like, where does he kind of fit in with this team? Now, obviously, he is still going to be coming off the bench. He's probably best in that role as that just, like, vacuum scorer off the bench that can just go get you buckets. And you'll kind of look like, okay, well, you have, you know, Stephon Castle now and Chris Paul and Harrison Barnes and, you know, Devin Vassell, right? Like, you... Even uh, Harrison Ingram is a guy that I'm sure the Spurs are going to want to get some run in and see what he can do. And it's like, where do you kind of fit in Keldon Johnson, right? Yeah, you could slot him in at the three, you know, backing up Harrison Barnes. Like, that's fine, um, you know, or even at the two at spots and times. But if you can turn him into a valuable piece, then why don't you? But regardless of what happens with Keldon Johnson, whether they end up trading him, keeping him, whatever, right? The best <laughs> kind of situation for the Spurs would be to get off of Zach Collins, right? Like, if they could find a way to get off of Zach Collins and actually get a comparable piece, particularly maybe a backup center, I think that that should be a real focus for them. We There hasn't been a lot of talk about Zach Collins potentially being on the move for the Spurs. Um, he's kind of, you know... He's kind of a, a double-edged sword at times, right? Like, there's times and moments where you look at him and you're like, all right, like, he's, he's a very good, comparable backup. And then there's times where you look at him and you're like, can you never play this guy ever again, right? Can you get this guy off the court? And, no, he's still young. He's 26, so there is still room for growth potential and upside. And like I said, he's had moments, he's had games um, where, no, he's really stood out. And it's like, okay, there's something there. But he just doesn't really fit comfortably in, in, in which the Spurs are kind of trying to operate, right? And you, the problem with trying to trade him, though, is he still has two years on his deal, right? He has this year coming up in which he's going to get $16.74 million, and then he has the 2025-2026 season in which he's going to have $18 uh, million on, on, on that year, right? So it's not, it's not only finding a team that is interested in Zach Collins, but it's also finding a team that's willing to take him on for multiple years, right? If he was expiring, like say he was on that $18 million expiring, then I think you could maybe potentially move him rather easily because that gives you just $18 million in expiring contract. There's always teams out there, particularly around like the trade deadline and stuff, that go like, hey, we'd love to, to kind of unload uh, some players, and you know, if you can find the right pieces that maybe make sense, you, you kind of do that type of trade, do that type of move, right? So I do think that, you know, worst case, you ride with them this year, and then now you got an $18 million expiring that you can maybe shop around in the offseason or at the trade deadline next, the following season, not next season. But I just think if you, if you can explore and find something, like you, you need a team that is like looking for that, that backup set, like the Knicks, right? Like, can you call the Knicks and see what they'd be willing to offer you for like a Zach Collins? Cause they want a backup center. They've touched base with um, the Utah jazz for Walker Kessler. And they, they struck out so far on that offer two first for him. And then they've also based on reports kind of touched base with uh, the Atlanta Hawks for, um, you know, a, uh, a Clint Capella, right? So, you know, if they kind of can't find that proper center that they want, do they just go, ah, you know, we could do worse than Zach Collins? Because they just kind of need a guy that can kind of plug in and, and play just several minutes. And he, in my opinion, kind of fits more what the Knicks style is as opposed to the Spurs and like kind of what the Spurs are trying to do. Right? I think Zach Collins in a backup role for the Spurs, you know, getting, a, you know, 10, 15 minutes a game, I think is 
good for them. Um, and I think could potentially you could work something out to, oh, maybe snag a piece or two, or even if you just kind of get off of his contract and like kind of free some stuff, but then the Knicks would have to send something back. But my, my point is, can you find a team like that? Even if it's not the Knicks, somebody that's like, Hey, you know what? We could really use a backup center and we could do worse than, than a Collins type thing. But you know, the, the, the beauty or at least the the direction in which the Spurs seem to kind of be treading that like, hey, Victor is so great, we need to get something done. And that like, hey, we want to take our time and and kind of build up this roster. And I've talked heavily about how like I do think that there is a genuine argument to try to expedite this and if you can squeeze in a chip or two before you really have to start paying Victor that superstar money, I do think that that's at least worth looking into. I think that's at least worth potentially trying to pull off. Obviously, you don't want to make the wrong move or you don't want to, you don't want to, like, you are in a position, luckily, to where you can be patient, right? The Spurs are in a position to where they don't have to rush, uh, but it would be nice to kind of get that piece or two. Like, a Lori Markkinen. Like, I understand why they're considering potentially making that push to go get Markkinen because it's like, okay, Markkinen would slot in, raises the ceiling of this team. He fits and doesn't take away from all the other pieces. He's still young enough to where you could have for the next five-plus years, right? Like, I get that. But you also want to, to not... Like, is marketing in the right move long term? You're going to have to pay him 40 plus million. Right? Like, there's questions that you can argue either way. And, but you want somebody that compliments and can play and slot alongside Victor Wimanyama. Right? Collins and Victor, again, at times looked okay, but it just didn't feel right. Right? It didn't quite seem to, to work the way that you had hoped or imagined. And so to me, it's like, yeah. One, I think it would be nice for the Spurs to get a center, period. So that way you don't have to worry about the wear and tear on Victor, right? And, you know, certain matches. Like, I'm not saying you have to even necessarily start that center. If you could just get a bigger, bulkier center. Um, if I'm the Spurs, I'm looking to try to get not only Larry Marketing, but can you get Walker Kessler, too? Right? Because that would be really nice. I mean, because you could, for now, bring Marketing off the... Or, uh, not Marketing, uh, uh, Kessler off the bench, Right? Slot Barnes, uh, Markinen, and then Victor Wimanyama. And then once Barnes, whatever you end up doing with him, whether you keep him or send him off and, you know, trade his contract next year. I don't need to do it this year, but next year when it's expired. Like, if they work something like that out, then, you know, now you can move Lori to the to the three, Victor to the four, and then um, have uh, Kessler at the five. Now you got three seven-foot guys, <laughs> three through five. I mean, that's... That could be very interesting, right? And especially Victor's ability to stretch the floor as well as Laurie Markin. And then even Kessler has even shown the ability to do that from time to time. So I, I definitely think, you know, I think I don't think it's the end of the world if the Spurs end up keeping Collins. Like, I don't think it's something where it's like, you have to get off of Collins ASAP or it's just spelling disaster, right? But in the same breath, I just think if you can get somebody that maybe makes a little more sense and is a little more complimentary at times and a little more consistent. Um, I, I think that that's the, the route that you should go. Right? I think that that's something that you should really look into um, if I'm the, the Spurs. But, you know, again, it's 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 tough because it's like you, you want... You got Chris Paul, you got Harrison Barnes, you got Victor Wimanyama, but you also have this nice young core. And it's like, you know, you don't want to take away from those guys, which, again, why I think Laurie Marketing does make some sense because you're not taking away from, you know, a Vassell and a Castle and Victor and all those other guys. But in the same breath, like, can you can you get, you know, better upgrades off the bench? And then, like I said, even maybe maybe you do trade Keldon Johnson and picks and go get a, a Laurie Marketing. Like, I still would look to potentially trade Zach Collins. See, can you maybe get some bench depth, right? And, and, kind of go that route and maybe go get a, another, a better ready-made wing off the bench, maybe a three and D guy or something. Just kind of a thought. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Hello. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Do you think, yes, Spurs have to trade Zach Collins? Like you got to get off of him ASAP. Do you think, no, no, keep him. 
you know, wait till next year when he's expiring, maybe get a little more. Um, I feel whatever your thoughts are. I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one.